Welcome to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. In today's show, we'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis as Bitcoin whales copy classic bull market moves as Bitcoin price now eyes 72,000. That's right. We're also going to be discussing Kathy Wood's Bitcoin ETF hits daily inflow record as Bitcoin retests the 72,000 level, as well as the BlackRock CEO Larry Fink, very bullish on Bitcoin as its ETF crosses 17 billion dollars. Also breaking news, Sam Bankman freed sentenced to 25 years in prison. We'll also be discussing Bitcoin's $300,000 dream. Is Rich Dad's bold prediction within reach? Can we truly push into the six figure Bitcoin realm? We're also going to be discussing Tether co-founder making a 300000 Bitcoin price prediction if this happens by April 20th. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much more in today's show. Welcome crypto fam, we back in the green and pumping. Let's go. Shout out to everyone in the live chat. Dirty, stress-free, relaxing, dankness, Jennifer, all the mods, greatly appreciate y'all. Hillbilly Will, what it do? I'm back in Puerto Rico, back at the home office. Let me know if the stream is loud, clear, and smooth. We greatly appreciate that. Y'all saw the breaking news. Bankman Freed sentenced to 25 years in prison. We're going to be discussing that today. Hodling from West Virginia. West Virginia vibes. Let's go, Hillbilly Will. And you can see that market price action up 2100 on the day. New all-time highs incoming, 80000 in play. Send it. First time for me live, all from work today. Shout out Robert Denson. Appreciate you tuned in live. I made it. Shout out to the Good Shepherd. What it do? Travis Hall. What up, Charles Josiah? Welcome. Smash the like. Good to see you, Helen. How you doing, family? The brother is home. Why bother? Welcome, welcome. Phil C, what it do? Guido in the building. No lag. Hallelujah for that. <laughs> Beautiful afternoon here in Huntington Beach, California. This one's for you. This one's for Jennifer. Pump it up, don't you know? Pump it up. Let's go. Pump this mofo up. History in the making. 20 days into the having family. It don't get no more exciting than that. Welcome home, JV. Greatly appreciated. David Wrong. Cheers. Welcome to the entire fam just tuning in. Pump the likes to pump the stream. And let's freaking go. CT in the building. Let's go. Shout out. Marcos P, welcome, welcome. Welcome, C-List, good to see you. What it do, McFoot and Ada? Manuel Pendroza, welcome. Is that the Italiano flag I see? Hoddle thy eggs and the Easter bunny cometh. That's right, it is Easter Sunday this weekend. Good Friday tomorrow, so happy holiday weekend. Good to see y'all. Let's go. Welcome, everyone, just tuned in. Holla, holla, as we continue to pump. Look. Pump it up if your game and went long. Yeah. When the dip hits, you just stay like King Kong. Hey. More than five sats in your stack, then get it on. Let's get it on. Sat stackers, where you at, fam? Jason Jimenez, welcome. Nipsey is back as well. That's right, Don. Loud and clear, JV. Cheers to that, Surge. Let's go. Hey, JV, passive is now the daily close or the daily dose. I dig it. I dig it. Let's get it. Exciting times, family. 71 in cometh, 72, 73, 74, all-time high price discovery around the corner. Let's see if we eclipse the all-time high this weekend. What do you guys say? What do you guys think for this upcoming week? 80,000 in play. Holla. We hitting 75 soon. You're damn right. I agree with that. Hillbilly will. What up, family? Shout out Crypto Voodoo. Good to see you as well. Happy Easter to the fam. Shout out Kerry Watts. Always an honor. Daily Dose. Mike Rafone Cheka, smash the likes. Greatly appreciate the reminder, Surge. Definitely helps out tremendously, so greatly appreciated. Now, we all know Bitcoin is the best asset. You agree? Agreed. <laughs> and there, there is no second best asset. Cheers to that. 
Uh, shout out, little bit bullish. Love this guy. Appreciate the support. 80,000 this week, says Serge. Just send it. Totally hear you on the micro strategy. See this. Hey, hey, hey. Shout out to the zombie fish. Quick question for JV. What's the best place for the daily premium crypto news alerts? Which one's the best crypto asset? Well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Okay. What's the second best? There is no second best. I'm not saying I'm number one. Uh, I'm sorry, I lied. I'm number one, two, three, four, and five. Phil predicts crab market until next week. Hi, Steve. What it do? 73,000 this weekend and 78,000 by Monday. Predicts Jennifer. Cheers to that. Let's pump this mofo up, family. Had the people on my back to get a song. Bears broke, have a talk, we smoked them like a bong. Boom, bears get smoked like a bong. Just hope we squeeze out of the shorts at 74, says Jason. Michael got hit on the market today, downgraded. Says Guido, you're referring to MicroStrategy there. So much in the news, I know it's hard to pick just a few stories today. So we got so much to cover. You know what I mean? And speaking of that, let's dive right in. If you're new to the channel, important to smash that subscribe button to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every day, just like this. Also important to hit that thumbs up, smash the like as it helps out tremendously with a YouTube algorithm. Today is pod episode number 1592. I'm your host, JV. It's March 28th, 2024, and we recaptured 71,000 today as the market continues to pump. So let's get it. Checking out our market watch, as you can see here, Bitcoin up 3% on the daily. We got Ether up 2%, trending back above 3,500. And overall, all the cryptos pumping and in the green with Doge leading the pack, pun intended, up 22% on the daily. And checking out CoinMarketCap.com, we're sitting at a $2.66 trillion market cap with a roughly $104 billion in volume for the past 24 hours. Bitcoin dominance at 52.3%, with the Ether dominance still on the decline at 16.1%. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers for the past 24 hours, Doge, Core, Floki, Whiff, Fetch and Ajax. Now, which altcoins family are you guys most bullish on for this particular bull run? Holla. And checking out the crypto bubbles to get more of a visual perspective on the day. Yeah, man, roughly 95% of the alts pumping uh, pretty nice right now and zooming out on the monthly. We even have some of these meme coins up as much as 500%, Pepe 300%, Floki 500, Fif almost 600, I mean Whiff that is, Bonk 100, pretty wild. Sheeb is even up 212% of the month. And checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. Hmm, I guess this is a different Crypto Greed and Fear Index. Let me get the one I usually pull up here. My apologies here. Let's see where we're currently rated for the day. It's an 80, an extreme greed. Yesterday an 83, last week a 78, and last month a 79. And checking out the Bitcoin halving countdown, the estimated halving date is April 18th, only 20 days out until the most significant event that only occurs every four years, one time in every four years. That's going to occur at block height 800. And 40,000 right now, according to the time chain calendar, we're currently sitting on block 836,709. And you could convert $1 for 1,400 Satoshis. Just note, the higher the Bitcoin price goes up in dollar terms, the less Satoshis you will get per dollar. So, you know what I mean? Act accordingly. And the Bitcoin market cap is also at $1.39 trillion. Let's go. So there you have it, family. Welcome, everyone. Just joining the stream. JV back in the flesh, Puerto Rico style. You already know. Portnoy talking to Michael Saylor. Oh, that's right. I saw Michael Saylor reach out to Portnoy. They're going to uh, link up in Miami. Let's see. We all know David uh, Paperhands Portnoy dumped his Bitcoin stash for a loss. Unfortunately for him. <laughs> Love the greed, says Boomer. Welcome. What up, Neri? Good afternoon. Bought some two nights ago. Love to hear that. Hokey Wolf here. Still use the lazy of the dip. Hokey Wolf. Right on, Bill. Yeah, changes probably by the hour family because it's based upon the block and it adjusts every day. So that's why some days we say, hey, it's going to happen 420. Uh, today, we say the 18th, maybe tomorrow would be the 25th. We'll, f we'll soon find out for sure, but the closer we get, the more accurate it will be. But there's no telling. It could be a few days, give or take, from that you know suggested date we just saw, which is the 18th. So we'll soon see. It could be sooner, could be later. Those lettuce hands, that's Portnoy for you. Yeah, damn straight. Tell him, Serge.
the sailors in the building. Trip was good, dankness. Uh, thank you, fam. Got to see my fam in uh, Florida for the week. The streams were always choppy, unfortunately, when I was in Florida because it was based on Wi-Fi, whereas here at the home office, we're plugged directly into the uh, internet box with the Ethernet cable. So it makes a huge difference on the stability of the stream. So glad to be back and in the flesh here for you guys. Uh, about to be worth damn near $100 easily. Haven't looked into it deeply, says Jay Ford. What are you referring to there, fam? Michael Saylor is going to take Portnoy to school. I hope they film it. It'll be very entertaining, I would imagine. Having date. So, yeah, that's why the having date changes. I bought some DJT a few days ago. Ford used my dry powder for a few days. Right on, Jennifer. I heard that makes uh, Donald Trump now worth over $8 billion as a result of going public there. Keep on keeping on, says Ron. Right on. We call them... You already know GC LLC. I heard PR dang fever outbreak. I nah, haven't heard of that. Haven't heard a word about that. Anthony, just be careful of the uh, United States mainstream FUD because they be sharing a lot of things that aren't accurate. Uh, DJ TJV, that's right. It's now officially live. I know Jennifer, the day it went live was like, I'm buying DJT. I'm like, what the heck is DJT? Now we know. I, I take it that's the uh, true social, which is the social network of Trump. Let me know if that's accurate, guys. Holla. But like most of the people who are buying assets at some point want to sell the assets out of profit. Is this true? Does this lady got it right? Let me know. People, 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 people that use, that use, that use, use fiat, fiat, fiat. Yes, that's right. Welcome, Anthony. Welcome, Don. Bitcoin's first purchase was to buy pizza. Portnoy knows what's up. <laughs> Currency. currency. What do we call those folks, by the way? People who use fiat currency as a store of value. Shout out in the chat. As a store of store of store of store of value. We call them core. We call them core. That's true. That is true. That's exactly what we call them. <laughs> you got that right, Lisa. You got it. Shout out, Lisa Brault. Appreciate you tuned into the live stream right now. Welcome everyone joining the stream. Pump the likes to pump the stream as we live the Bitcoin dream. Shout out Lazarus. We call that poor. It's a slamming brat. <laughs> Poe, that's right. Made 35,000 for trading gold this week. Pumping it right now into Bitcoin. That's what's up, little bit bullish. Let's go. I don't want to sell. I want to use Bitcoin as collateral. What's the best company for that? Let us know, fam, if you guys know. I know there's some decentralized protocols like Aave where you can borrow against your biddies. Not sure the banks right now, man. I know in the near future, it'll be very common, though. That's right. For the clarification, thanks, Jennifer. DJT is the holding company that bought True Social from Trump. Trump has 51% of the company. Whoa. Yeah, man. So that would put Trump Net worth now over $8 billion. Is that accurate? Pretty amazing. What up, Anthony? Says Sheeb. <laughs> what up, caveman? Welcome, everyone, joining the stream. Anyways, let's dive into today's Bitcoin technical analysis. Check out the charts where the price action is likely to take us next. Bitcoin sought higher levels at the week's last Wall Street open as the bulls refused to succumb to market nerves. Here we're looking at the Bitcoin one hour candle chart. Now data from TradingView followed a resurgent Bitcoin price action as it surpassed 71,000 here this morning. Flash volatility the day prior was an ongoing legal battle between US SEC and Coinbase, uh, which sent Bitcoin below the 69,000 support. That was just the other day. The weakness did not last long as buyers stepped in to fuel the ongoing attempt to snatch the liquidity near all-time highs. And on the day, popular trader Sku warned that fake-out price behavior could result from manipulative liquidity moves. And amongst these was fresh bid support between 70200 and 70600 all of which was subsequently removed from the Binance order book. And with all-time highs still acting as a clear price ceiling, the current top being 73800 fellow trader Dan Crypto Trades considered where price discovery could take Bitcoin should the sellers be beaten out 
quoting them here, break an all-time high and low 80,000 should follow shortly afterwards, I think. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the analysts. And the chart here you can see on your screen showed near-term trend line support in the form of the 200 period simple and exponential moving averages on the four-hour time frames. Now, analyzing on-chain Bitcoin flows, we had the crypto quant CEO, Ki jong uh, highlighting a shift in ownership amongst the biggest Bitcoin hodlers. Under current conditions, he revealed the long-term investors with significant exposure, in which we call the whales, were offloading coins, while new whale entities were steadily buying up the supply. These were institutions, he suggested, with the U.S. spot Bitcoin e-test removing hundreds of billions of dollars worth of BTC from the market every day. Quoting them here, old whales are selling Bitcoin to the new whales, not retail investors. This can clearly be observed on chain, as outlined right here, the chart showed the consequences of major on chain ownership shifts, a run up to all time highs, as witnessed in both the 2017 and 2021 bull markets. And quoting analyst Jelle here, Bitcoin is less than 4% away from a huge breakout. The previous all time high breakouts, April 2017 and December of 2020, both led to three weeks of rapid expansion, more than doubling the prices. In the process, if this pattern repeats, we'd push to $150,000 Bitcoin in less than a month. Now, how many of you can foresee that happening? $150,000 Bitcoin within the next 30 days. Holla at your boy. Welcome, everyone, joining the stream. I appreciate your content. Great source for pointing me towards the Bitcoin news. Appreciate you. Feedback there. Throwaway57. Welcome to the stream. MSTR will bounce back. That's right. MSTR, down for the cause, never down for the count. <laughs> I think DJT may go up to hundreds of dollars if it becomes a something, what is that, a referendum war. But I, again, didn't buy it to make money. I only did it to afford a few shares right now, leftovers I had on Fidelity, right on Data Biter. So I take it it's already publicly traded, meaning you guys can buy it anywhere else you can buy stocks. Is that accurate? It could also plummet to the 30s or 40s. Says Data Biter, are you referring to Bitcoin there, family? Let me know. Uh, Anthony says yes. Uh, Lisa re retracted a message. Oh no, what'd you retract there? <laughs> Simon, welcome to the stream, family. 8.28 billion is Trump's net worth on paper. Whoa, pretty serious there. That would make him amongst one of the richest men on the planet. Correct me if I'm wrong. He must be in the top 20 by now. Let me know if that's accurate, family. Can't short your door, we can't afford that. No. Wait for the pump to come, we should afford that. Yeah. I think in 10 years, who knows? It could be the next thing after America wakes up to censorship. That's right. So let me know if I got this right. True Social is 100% uncensored. Uncensored social media platform. Is that accurate? Let me know. I mean, anything can happen. 150,000 ain't one month. Why not? This is true, Serge. It's going. I had a meeting with my mayor and the council last week. They need to vote on it to see if they will invest into Bitcoin. We shall see. That's what's up, Jennifer. More power to you. Shout out. Cheers. It is easy. At 75, the market makers fish all the shorts and then within 48 to 82, which the M2 corrected all time high within 30 days, we double to 160. Send it, Stephen. Good morning, 808 Bear. This one's for you. Thoughts on Solana? Personally, I'm not a fan. It was considered one of the Sam coins, and I'm short on Sam Bankman Freed. <laughs> Anything he promoted, I am not a fan of, pretty much. Notice he didn't promote Bitcoin. Hence, I'm a huge fan of Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin was the only crypto he couldn't control. He printed the FTT out of thin air. And he did a lot of shady practices with Saul. So, personally, I'm not a fan. Some of you guys I know are. Uh, let me know if you are. All good. Respect to everyone. We all have uh, different opinions and views, but that's a healthy thing, I remind you. I bought 1,000 of Doge in the bear market for 0.05. Gaming on Bitcoin. Roll it over. Safe Moon is Trump pumping like a, a nun. Is Safe Moon pumping again? I thought it crashed to virtually nothing. Interesting. 75,000 has a lot of resistance, though, says Chief. Safe Moon. Oh, my God. Exactly. <laughs> What's the second best? I mean, that's a question we only ask Sailor here. Which one's the best crypto asset? Well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Okay. What's the second best? There is no second best. Shout out to the Rumble fam as well. We are streaming live on Rumble right now. We will have a uncensored 
after party when the YouTube stream ends, just FYI. 25 years convicted. Don't drop the soap. That's right. Bankman Freed breaking news. He got sentenced to 25 years in prison. We'll be covering the, covering the latest from the, uh, the judge from the sentencing a little earlier. Happy 420, by the way, is 420 p.m. here in Puerto Rico, as well as in New York. Please stand up. Now when everyone's expecting Bitcoin to hit 75, I have a feeling we're going to what? Uh, I feel bad for Sam. He was just a pawn, says Michael. I heard today that only 550,000 people hold one bitty. Is that true? Sounds about right. I don't know their BS. Let me know if any of you guys can confirm that. 420. <laughs> Umer, you wish we revisit 57? I'm doubtful on that one. I'm not a fan of the U.S. government not giving up the Constitution, though. For real. Is Bitcoin number one forever? Bitcoin. What's the second best? There is no second best. The world will be so much different in 25 years. This is true. How many millions do you think it'll be per one Bitcoin by the time Bankman Freed gets out? But who knows? Maybe with good conduct, he can get out in 10 years for all we know. He can still potentially get pardoned by uh, Sleepy Joe. You just never know, considering he was the second largest donor of the Democratic Party. Thanks to consider. Sam's going to jail and Bitcoin is going to pump. Amen to that. How many biddies do we need to retire in 10 years with 5 million? Shout out to BFF Dixie Rect. Right on, Toasty Toast. Great question. It's all going to depend upon many factors, including your own lifestyle, their family. So it's hard to answer that. 827,000 wallets hold at least one Bitcoin. So yeah, safe to say less than a half a million people then own a Bitcoin because I would imagine many people have multiple wallets. Just guessing. Smash the like, peeps. Thank you, Super Cool Bros 2.0. Shout out to all the members of the channel with the sexy badge next to your name. Appreciate the support. FET is a rocking word. SBF, you soul. Soul is a great code. Bad people do bad things, says MJ. SBF will be out when it hits a million. A Bitcoin. Tim Puff says howdy. I wonder when the sentencing for Caroline Ellison and the rest of them will be in. And where's Sam? Sam just fled and apparently never even got arrested, which is interesting. Sam is free, and I'm not we're talk, talking about Bankman Free, but the other guy. Uh, do you see the U.S. using Bitcoin as a second currency? Anything is possible, family. I mean, it's up to the people. I don't think the government will say, hey, we want you guys to use Bitcoin. That's not going to happen. But what if the people just all start using it? to get away from the hyperinflation of the US dollar, then it's a different story. Sam is gonna be asking for the Bitcoin prices while in prison. Greetings from Holland for the best show on YouTube, thanks. Shout out Barry, appreciate it. There's no way I can afford five biddies. He's 32, 57 by the time he gets out. Ouch. There's no second best crypto asset. Uh, uh, it isn't slightly different. This just bought a new wallet, reached my limits. I put into each wallet. I now hold five cold wallets. There you go, Jennifer. Cheers to Jennifer. Early Bitcoin OG in the building, respect. But anyways, fam, let's dive into our next story of the day, discuss the latest from Kathy Wood and her product for her ETF, which is seeing record inflows. Let's break it down. ARC 21's shares, spot Bitcoin ETF, managed to notch a record 202 billion of, I'm sorry, million of inflows this Wednesday, almost quintupling its average daily inflows as Bitcoin fell just short of reaching 72,000. Preliminary data from Farside Investment Investors revealed March 27, the ARC 21 shares Bitcoin ETF daily inflow was a fourfold increase from its daily average of 44 million since launch January 11th. It also nearly tripled the amount from the previous day when ARC Invest saw inflows of 74 million while there were no recorded inflows on March 25th as per data here from the far side. Meanwhile, the Valkyrie Bitcoin ETF with the ticker Burr witnessed a 5.1 million worth of inflows, while Invesco Galaxy saw 4.8 million worth of inflows, and Franklin Bitcoin's ETF had 4 million of inflows, along with Manx ETF HODL, noting 2 million. Both the Wisdom Tree 
Uh, Bitcoin ETF and Fidelity Investments reported one and a half million of inflows, all single digit inflows. However, BlackRock data has yet to come in. However, we'll be discussing BlackRock just next as our story. So all good. So it comes as Bitcoin hits almost 72,000 before falling below 69,000. That was most likely due to the SEC lawsuit drama from, uh, you know, versus uh, Coinbase FYI, which was uh, announced the other day. Now, in a March 28th post, crypto researcher Gumshoe informed his 29,000 followers, investors are opting for a micro perspective, focusing on the daily price closures rather than considering the actual influx of the funds of Bitcoin. Quoting him here, Bitcoin ETF seeing all-time high inflows and people are panicking over the daily close of a candle. In a post on X, chief investment officer of Bitcoin Wise, Matt Hogan stated the majority of professional investors are still unable to buy Bitcoin ETFs, especially in the UK, where the FCA is still broadly aligned against crypto. Quitting them here, the truth is most professional investors still cannot buy Bitcoin ETFs. That will change through a series of 100 plus individual due diligence processes over the next two years. And popular crypto commentator Bitcoin Munger shared with his followers he believes the next 13 billion worth of inflows could add 50 to 70,000 or more to the price. Send it with 70,000 times two. That would take us to 140,000 per coin. Now, it was also reported that a total of 13.2 billion in new capital has flowed into investment products such as the spot Bitcoin ETFs year to date. Not too shabby. And a quick shout out to Stephen Hoofer or Huffer. My apologies if I'm not pronouncing the name right. Appreciate you becoming a member of the micro or the HODL gang. Uh, shout out to the HODL gang and MicroStrategy members of the channel. Also, uh, Grayscale and Satoshi. We greatly appreciate all the support family. Shout out Independent Free Soul. Shout out Databiter. I have millions of Satoshis. That's what's up. Everyone here should be a Satoshi millionaire. I'm pretty sure you can do so for less than $800 at today's prices. JV, what's your Bitcoin price prediction by May of next year? JV's bull scenario for the cycle is 750000 JV's bear scenario for the cycle peak is 222000 Send it. Let me know your thoughts on that. Yeah. Call me 3AC cause I'm blowing it up Short squeeze more please yeah it's going to pump it You're damn straight uh, Data Biter send them to me and I'll send you back Two times as many in six months Oh boy <laughs> uh, Hi bro from Poland Today is my first day training um, or Trading on Bybit's bot Be careful they're trading on Bybit as you know, they're currently being investigated by the SEC. And also be careful with bots. Uh, bots are bots. You know I mean, shout out JV, shout out MJ. What it do? 100,000 by the having and 150,000 within 15 days of the having. Oh my God. Within two weeks, pumping 50 G's. I'm so ready for that, Jennifer. Jerome Rieger, 700,000 will never happen. You don't think Bitcoin can 10X ever? Are you serious? Uh, shout out Lisa Palco. Greatly appreciate you subscribing to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. Bilal from DC, welcome. Let's go. Appreciate everyone uh, joining the stream. Uh, pumping the likes helps pump the stream. Thank you. And that is why we are here, right? Because we need an asset. Bitcoin is the best. There is no second best. Toasty toast. A uh, Hamzat versus Whitaker was just announced. If I was a betting man, one Bitcoin on Hamzat. That's going to be a pretty lit uh, UFC battle. Looking forward to that one. Uh, cheers to that, Toasty Toast. Welcome, Devon. Welcome, Lock Sky. Shout out all the all the legends here in the chat. We greatly appreciate y'all support. Ups. Oops. I did not that's. I don't know what you're referring to there, Andrew. What up? <laughs> Welcome. 80,000 top four Bitcoin this year. That's pretty bearish in my opinion, considering we already tapped roughly 74. So you don't think over the course of the next nine months, we can climb more than 6,000. I say extremely bearish. I think 100,000 incoming. Send it. Let me know your thoughts. There is no second best. That's right. Wow, it's a normal time live show. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, I got you guys. It's Good Friday tomorrow. It is Easter Sunday weekend. Make some noise for that. I think 80,000 by May, June the latest. 80 to 50,000, I think, for Bitcoin next year. 100 Gs, 100 Gs, baby. 
Good afternoon, Juan Espino. Good to see you, broski. Welcome, everyone. Just joining the stream. Make some noise. Holla. Shout out Lisa Palco. Greatly appreciate you becoming a Hoddle Gang member and supporting the channel through the memberships. Respect, family. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, 50,000 incoming. The whales always catch people out. We'll see about that, trader. Uh, Bitcoin stuck between 65 and 73. Remember early February when we were only 40,000? That's right. Y'all must have forgot. Are you hiding some eggs for the Easter? That's a great question. I can't reveal my secrets now. First live in a while. Hope you're well, JV. Thank you, Boz Dragon. Good to see you, broski. Stock market is closed tomorrow. Not Bitcoin. 79 next week. Send it. I think this year, 200,000 before the end of 2024, 350,000 top of 2025. Send it. Steven, Larry Fink is a Bitcoin fan, and he will not deny the possibility of 700,000. I think there's going to be a super cycle with Bitcoin. I hope you're right. And speaking of uh, the BlackRock CEO, Larry Fink, that's actually our next story of the day. The headline reads, BlackRock CEO very bullish on Bitcoin as its ETF crosses 17 billion. That's right. Larry Fink has been pleasantly surprised by the performance of his firm's spot Bitcoin ETF. As he has reiterated, he is very bullish on the long-term viability of Bitcoin. Quoting him here, iBit is the fastest growing ETF in the history of ETFs. Nothing has gained assets as fast as iBit in the history of ETFs. Let that sink in. He shared that on uh, Fox Business News just yesterday, the 27th. Fink said that iShares Bitcoin Trust, which is iBit's performance, has even surprised him at how well it has performed over the first 11 trading weeks. Now, iBit has a strong start to trading, tallying $13.5 billion in flows in the first 11 weeks, with an Roughly 850 million daily high on March 12th, according to Farside Investors. IBIT averages a little over 260 million in inflows per trading day. Uh, quoting Fink again from the interview, we're creating now a market that has more liquidity, more transparency, and I am pleasantly surprised. I would have never have predicted it before we filed it, and we are going to see this type of retail demand. Asked whether iBit would do good, but not this good, was what he was anticipating. He responded, yeah, definitely. I am very bullish on the long-term viability of Bitcoin, according to the BlackRock CEO. And here's a clip of him that Simon Dixon posted of him discussing this on uh, Fox Business News. Let me know if you guys saw this clip. I'll include it in the show notes below the video in the description. Now, iBit currently holds over $17 billion worth of Bitcoin. Whoa, since January 11th. That's mind-boggling. According to BitMax Research, it only took two months to reach the $10 billion mark, a milestone that took the first gold ETF two years to reach. Mind-boggling. And of the currently approved ETFs, iBit only trails the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust and Bitcoin Holdings at $23.6 billion in BTC. Grayscale Bitcoin holdings have continued to slip down from 620,000 Bitcoin it held before converting to a spot Bitcoin ETF. Now they're closer in the 300,000 range, virtually shedding half of their Bitcoin holdings. The nine spot Bitcoin ETF issuers, excluding Grayscale, now hold over 34 billion in Bitcoin with iBit, the Fidelity Wise Origin Bitcoin Fund, and ARC 21 shares leading the inflows. Meanwhile, some industry pundits predict that some spot Bitcoin ETF issuers could eventually shut down due to the lack of profits. Quoting them here, most of the current ETFs launched will never even break even at cost and will only work if they get to billions of assets under management, which they won't, according to Hector McNeil, the co-CEO and founder of white label ETF provider, Han ETF. Now, several ETF issuers have lowered their fees to try to be competitive against some of the big players, but these small issuers face an up Hill battle and entering this turf war of giants, according to Bloomberg ETF analyst Henry Jim. If they match the fees, they won't have enough revenue to survive. And if they don't lower the fees, they won't be able to gather enough critical mass assets to survive. Now, asset management firm Hashdex had its spot Bitcoin ETF approved March 27th, making it the 11th and latest entrant to a competitive spot Bitcoin ETF market in the United States. And let's not forget, we also have ETFs, which are going to be launched here soon in Hong Kong. Big money there coming out of the East and then, of course, out of El Salvador in Central America. And the difference, some of these ETFs are going to be Bitcoin in. 
some even Bitcoin out, whereas that doesn't currently exist here in the United States. My personal view is more competition, the better as the game theory continues in full force. But let me know your thoughts, family. Now, also consider that what BlackRock just achieved since January 11th in just over two months, it took MicroStrategy four years to acquire over uh, 200,000 Bitcoin. BlackRock just did that in less than three months. So game theory is playing out very rapidly right now, and I feel we're just getting started. Bitcoin can't be measured by financial statements, says Rock. Shout out to Rock. It just kept downgrading to my laptop. I avoided it. Oh, boy. This is JB's fault because I got excited to see the show was live. Dang it, Adam. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> I think the pump will be May 2024. Bitcoin ETH up, up, and away. How far to the sky? right? Rules, respect the people that stream, and JV, don't spam the chat. If you keep spamming, I'll remove you. Cheers to Jennifer. Appreciate the mods. <laughs> Bitcoin is the new thing TradeFi is pumping this year. I disagree that all three will go out of business. This is easy money. It costs very little to maintain a fund, and the asset does heavy lifting. Some smaller ones will survive easily. Thanks for your feedback there, Data. Bitcoin is very generous. Here at 70,000, waiting for you before it skyrockets. That's right. Seize the moment. Take advantage because, hey, by tomorrow's stream, we could be in the 80,000s. You just never know when we're going to take off next leg up. So respect the pump. That's right, Stephen. You already know. Cheers for the lovely moderator, Jennifer. Cheers to that independent free soul. Appreciate you supporting us, supporting the stream. Our next story of the day, we're about to break down Bankman Freed and then some very bullish price predictions, Bitcoin hitting 300,000 per coin, according to rich dad, Robert Kiyosaki. And then we have another $300,000 prediction from the Tether co-founder. So yeah, if you're just joining us, fam, pump the likes, pump the stream. Bitcoin's still up $1,800 on the day, and the day is still young. We have all evening to pump. Rock, of course, they are different, though they overlap in mining. Bitcoin is like a stock alternative to them. So see this 80,000 top predictions in the chat is what we call lettuce hands. <laughs> Robbie, Bitcoin made me more proud to be Salvadoran. Viva El Salvador. Cheers to that, Jerry, and shout out to El Salvador. Shout out to Bukele. All my fam out there. <laughs> Excuse me. Don't sell Bitcoin. I sold my car. Oh, man, I got the hiccups right before the Bankman Freed story. Coincidence? Crazy. Ah, oh, man. Pretty serious hiccups, too. Easter Bunny will be bullish this year. That's right. What about Pepe? How far can we ri be rich with this ish? I have no clue, Andrew. Once we hit April, oh boy. Oh man, the hiccups are picking up even worse. My water supply is low. I have the kombucha. But for some reason, I don't feel like drinking all this kombucha. It can make my stomach unsettling. I need more water. <laughs> Let's go. Hold your breath. I may have to try that, Devon. <sighs> but at the same time, I don't want to pass out live on the stream. That wouldn't be a good look. I take a beer. Maybe I need a beer. A few drops of bitters will help the egg ups. Man. At least it's towards the latter end of the show, for Christ's sake. <laughs> They're pretty serious, though, man. Go upside down and hold your... Is that all I got to do? You're the best, JB. Uh, cheers, Independent. I appreciate it. And do five push-ups. <laughs> Anyways, we're just going to continue with the story. My apologies for the hiccups. It is what it is. Welcome to the live stream. Anyways, here's the latest from Bankman Freed being sentenced 25 years in prison. The headline reads... One second, let me backtrack it. As you can see here, Sam Bankman Freed sentenced to 25 years in prison. That's right. Breaking news today. Uh, so March 28th, Judge Lewis Kaplan of the U.S. District Court of the Southern District in New York sentenced Bankman Freed to 240 months and 60, I'm sorry, 240 months plus 60 months for a total of 25 years for his conviction 
on seven felony charges. SBF was the first person tied to FTX and Alameda Research to face prison time following the collapse of the exchange back in November 2022. Seems like yesterday. You know what I mean? Now, Judge Kaplan found SBF also committed witness tampering based on events that led him to revoke bail August 2023 and perjury based on his testimony at trial over the FTX user funds. He acknowledged Bankman Fried's social awkwardness, but said based on former Alameda Research CEO Caroline Ellison's testimony, SBF knew he was at fault but was not going to admit. A thing, quoting the judge here, punishment must fit the seriousness of the crime, according to the judge. And this was a serious crime. When not lying, Bankman Freed was evasive, hair splitting, trying to get the prosecutors to rephrase questions for him. I've been doing this job for close for 30 years. I've never seen a performance like that. The judge also suggested an 11 billion judgment in addition to SBS prison time. He said FTX investors lost $1.7 billion, lenders lost $1.3 billion, and customers lost the most at $8 billion. And according to the inner city press reporter Matthew Lee, the New York courtroom was packed with members of the public and officials before the U.S. Marshals brought out Bankman Freed. The former FTX CEO is reportedly wearing light brown clothes, the uniform of the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn, where he stayed since the judge revoked his bail. Quoting him here, I reject the defense's argument about loss, both on the law and on the facts, said Judge Kaplan. And according to the inner city press, the assertion that customers and creditors will be paid in full is misleading. Defendants equate loss with dollar volume in the bankruptcy case, added the judge. A fortuitous run-up in the value of some cryptos bears no relation to the gravity of the crimes that were committed. A thief who takes his loot to Las Vegas and successfully bets is not entitled to a sentencing reduction. Good for the judge on that. And ultimately, what they're pointing out, you know, uh, Bankman Freed's mom wrote like a letter to the court that my son's making everyone whole. He shouldn't serve any serious prison time, yada, yada, yada. But you all know that the investors are not being made whole. They're getting paid the Bitcoin at the bottom of the market, meaning Bitcoin at 16,000 and not 70,000. Just FYI, I wanted to point that out. But anyways, before the judge announced the sentence, Bankman Fried said he was sorry about what happened at every stage. Oh, wow. He said he's sorry. Claiming FDX would have survived if it hadn't been shut down. Sure, Sam. In a final, final statement, his attorney seemingly portrayed the former FTX CEO as misunderstood genius. Quoting them here, Sam was not a ruthless financial serial killer. He wasn't predatory. He makes decisions with math in his head, not malice in his heart. Tell it to the judge. Anyways, Sunil, a UK national who flew from London for the sentence and hearing, testified that he had suffered for two years after the collapse of FTX, addressed the court on behalf of other FTX victims pushing back against the narrative that the loss was zero based on the exchange's plans of repay repayment. Quoting him here, if Mr. Bankman Freed thought mathematics justified it, he'd do it again. And also added there was no acceptance of responsibility from the former CEO. Now, Judge Kaplan's sentence essentially split the difference between recommendations from SBF's attorneys and prosecutors who are argued for a maximum six and a half and 50 years, respectively. Many experts predicted Judge Kaplan would impose a sentence of between 10 to 30 years based on the facts of the case and the amount of funds involved. Meanwhile, Gary Wang, Caroline Ellison, Nishad, and Ryan, four other individuals associated with FTX and Alameda, charged in the same case as SBF, have pleaded guilty, accepting deals. So the former CEO of FTX Digital Markets was the only one of the four to not testify at Bankman Freed's criminal trial. He'll likely be the next to face sentence, fe sentencing on uh, the 1st of May. Now, let me know how you feel Caroline Ellison and the rest of the gang are going to fare with their se sentencing uh, later uh, in the coming months. Holla at your boy. Still got the hiccups, unfortunately. But anyways, family, welcome everyone joining the stream. Bitcoin continues to pump. Our next stories of the day are going to be discussing Bitcoin smash 300,000. But first, let's get some more water. Let's go. What up, Jerry? What if they just held? Didn't everyone presumably sell? No, they're getting the dollar equivalent. So hypothetically, here's how, how it worked. Let's say you had one Bitcoin on the FTX exchange. Well, that Bitcoin, they're going to give you six, roughly 16,000 for it. They're not going to give you your Bitcoin back. You're getting the USD equivalent at the 
very bottom of the market. So virtually every investor gets screwed over. That's how this ish works, unfortunately. Yeah, you know I mean, when's the pardon coming? Great question. Great, great question. Would Fix actually have survived? It was a team effort. They should all get many years. It is a ripoff, and the lawyers are making a da- fortune. Well, lawyers always make a fortune. That's that's for sure. the The real winners here are the lawyers. The investors are the losers. The creditors are lo- everyone's a loser except the lawyers and the court system. Whoever owns the court. 71,000, let's go, Devon. Welcome, welcome. There is no second best, that's right. It's sad that people took advantage of Sam's obvious disability. He deserves the time, but doesn't deserve everyone who used him, says Don. You put that private run from Tampa in your capucci. <laughs> Five deep breaths, bro. Then on the fifth, old breath for 30, 30. Is that the secret there, little? Too many lawyers. Many of them do nothing. The firm grifting all the money. That should go back to the investors, of course. But unfortunately, it don't work that way. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of justice in the justice system. They make money on the appreciation, but aren't giving that back. Of course, they're not. What are a bunch of lawyers at the bottom of the ocean? <laughs> I don't know. What are they? They made money. They're not going to give it back. Just before Biden leaves office is when the pardon will come, predicts Jennifer. I won't be surprised if that happens either, family. Considering, again, the second largest donor to Biden and the Democratic Party. I think number one was Soros. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. What a bunch of lawyers. Yeah, I want to know the rest of that joke there. What do we call a bunch of lawyers at the bottom of the ocean? I heard an investor lost his money with Sam, and they still invest in Bitcoin. So glad he still believes in crypto, right? Bottom feeders. That's a good one, actually. Hold your breath through one to two hiccups. It's done. Well, let's try this, for Christ's sake. I need some help here. See some shorters selling. See news reporters telling. Uh Us all to sell it. We start longing that she is. How are you sure about that? I talk about 300,000. I'm still holding my breath, guys. And I'm reading comments at the same time. Oh, damn it. Still got it. Uh, JB, what's good? What's your prediction by seven one, bruh? I didn't. I don't have a particular prediction by that particular date, but for the cycle peak, the bear scenario two 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 hundred twenty two thou, and the bull scenario cycle pe- cycle peak is going to be uh, seven hundred fifty thousand. My advice: drink heavily. I know if I had this whole thing a water fill, that just. De- down it and probably help, but I have very little and I'm, I'm pacing here. <sighs> Drink upside down. So the banks use to own us and loan us on interest, but now we loan ourselves to the system and then the bank on all the interest pretty much. Welcome to fractional reserve banking. What will happen when GBTC gets drained out? then they won't have any more outflows. <laughs> it seems like that's going to happen at the level it is. Hold your breath and slowly. Well, the, the issue is if I count to a, a 10,000 holding my breath, everyone will leave the stream because we're, li- we're live right now, dog. Just trying to keep it moving. Oh, the Rizal beatboxing at the same time. That's where I got that, by the way. If you only knew. If you only yeah. Rozelle's the, the king of the beatboxing, a huge les- uh, huge fan, by the way. I love Rozelle. Oh, my God. Take a deep breath, hold, and swallow three times, and breathe out. Moonstone. Or I can just keep reading the news and go crazy. One of the two is going to happen. <laughs> if you only knew. I'm looking forward to Grayscale stopping the self pressure stop burping damn it blow the air out deep breath and hold and swallow three times plug your ears oh my god terrible predictions emilio emilie hand over to nipsey nipsey take it take it away we don't want to see jb pass out and i know that wouldn't look good you're a champ jb 
changing on through the battle. Charging, you got to charge on. There's no quit in me, so we're going to keep it moving. So yeah, let's discuss our next story of the day. Rich Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, and his $300,000 Bitcoin price prediction dream, shall we? Here we go. We'll start here. Bitcoin surged at the end of March, surpassing key psychological threshold of 70000 per token. Since then, Bitcoin lost over 10 percent of its value before breaching this level in the recent days, but now we're back above 71,000. As it appears, it is a game on the world's largest <laughs> cryptocurrency. Bitcoin, as we know, has seen ups and downs, but ahead of, its, uh, ahead of its pivotal halving event scheduled to take place in the next three weeks, it's been mostly up. This mega cap Bitcoin hasn't made a new all-time high in two weeks, an incredibly long time, right? Seems like years, but Many bulls think it's just a matter of time before we take off again with our next leg up. So seeing a 70 handle on Bitcoin is truly something I wasn't sure we see, according to this author, at least during the deaths of the last crypt crypto winter. And now we're trading well above this level. A substantial accumulation suggests a rise well above the previous highs could be in order. That's right, yo. Some crypto analysts feared a significant pre-having dip, and we did dip uh, as much as 17%, not as much as the previous pre-having dip. So also something to consider. This is the very first time in Bitcoin history we broke the previous all-time high pre-having, all previous three halvings. It was always post-having. So things are a little different this time. So let's discuss, is 300000 really achievable? Let's break it down. There have been a considerable amount of bullish investors for Bitcoin financial expert Kiyosaki. Being the biggest fan of the said crypto, I have to admit, I have reread Rich Dad Poor Dad a number of times. I've probably read it personally a dozen times in my life. Let me know if you guys have read that classic. That said, his views on Bitcoin as a store value continue to drive interest in some circles, as do the price predictions. A quick shout out to Tim Puff. I appreciate you supporting the channel by becoming a HODL Gang member. HODL Gang, HODL Gang, HODL Gang. Respect. Kiyosaki recently predicted that Bitcoin can reach 300000 per coin, a value that would be driven by both its nature as a store of value and as the global economic uh, shifts towards safe haven assets. I think some of this narrative certainly plays into the reason certain investors hold Bitcoin. In fact, he even recently announced he was going to purchase an additional 10 Bitcoin, and a few weeks ago, he announced holding 66 Bitcoin, so that would put him at a holding of roughly 76 BTC. Now, that said, a 300000 price target doesn't seem that crazy now, does it? Uh, Bitcoin has doubled and doubled and doubled again over history, as we all know, suggesting the trend can't change may simply be ludicrous to some. Let me know your thoughts on that. Do you think these cycles stay intact? Now, according to this author, he says, I'm not sold on 300000 price target necessarily, but I think 100000 could be in the cards this year. So for those willing to put a small portion of one's portfolio into crypto, Bitcoin would be how I do it right now. Now, I want to point out, uh, talking about Bitcoin allocation in a portfolio, BlackRock, a couple of years ago, released a study and their recommended allocation in a portfolio for Bitcoin 84.9%. Just let that sink in. What if the $10 trillion asset manager actually, over time, allocated roughly 85% of their portfolio into Bitcoin? What if the other asset management behemoths did the same thing? Now, obviously, that would take Bitcoin to tens of millions of dollars per coin. But what if they only did 5%? What if the other asset managers followed? That would be game-changing in and of, of itself. And even ARK Invest's Kathy Wood has predicted, even if they only put roughly 2 to 3% into Bitcoin, we can easily tap the seven-figure price target. So I want to know your thoughts. The game has changed. That's right. The hiccups are gone. Thank you, Rich Dad. <laughs> in Bitcoin, we trust. I'm 86% in, just saying. Love to hear that. I'm all in personally. It will be hard for the fiduciaries not to have more of a percentage of the market. Seeing the performance, it's just going to make them look like idiots, right? So fiduciaries, get with the program and tell your clients to stack some biddies. Let them know Bitcoin is the greatest appreciating asset in all mankind, in human history. Let them know there's a finite limited supply. Let them know it's immutable and no corrupt politician can change the code. Let them know they can never print more. Let them know it's borderless. Let them know it's unconfiscatable. Let them know it has number go up technology. Let them know the price is going up forever, Laura. Don't keep it a secret, fiduciaries, or it's on you. 
Uh, if they had done that, when Bitcoin would have been at 100,000 that year, higher even. So see this, I'm 80% crypto, 10% crypto stocks, and 10% fiat. It says independent. Why so bullish on fiat? 10%, good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> JV, hiccups are gone. Let's freaking go. Hoddle gang, hoddle gang, hoddle gang. Shout out, Alan. Appreciate that. If it's not going to zero, it's going to a million. Tell him, Michael. Bitcoin is more likely to go to a million than zero. That's a fact. Take that, bears. Shout out, Alan David. So, $1,000 to Bitcoin today will be 3000 when Bitcoin hits 100 no, that's not how it works. A thousand dollars in Bitcoin today at seventy thousand means when we're at one hundred and forty thousand, you're gonna have two thousand. I guess you're close, but not precise. Luke Doggy Dog, I a man. How about that guy the other day saying he didn't like the hip hop clips? F that. Love how you played mad clips after that. Dude should sell his Bitcoin. <laughs> Best comment of the day. Thank you, Luke Doggy Dog. And for those who missed it, I was streaming yesterday in Florida, and someone had the balls to say, hip hop sucks. Uh, your show sucks because you play hip hop. And it's like, what are you, 90 years old? No respect. Just saying. But yeah, it was kind of funny. And then I just kept playing my hip hop clips. And then I said, let's see what the uh, consensus says. And all of you guys, literally every one of you, we love the hip hop clips. That's what makes your show your show, JV. Don't ever stop playing those clips. So shout out to all the hip hop clips from Little Bubble to uh, Robbie P and everyone we sample here. And even uh, the McGregor clips and everything else that comes along with it. You know what I mean? Good stuff. It's red panty night when you sign to find me, yeah? Yeah. Fiat, 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 fiat. Currency. currency. We call them poor. We call them poor. Yes, you already know, Devon. I don't listen to hip hop except on people's shows, but I don't mind. It sounds cool. Exactly. People got to remember, like, every clip I'm playing you is a Bitcoin remix. So if you don't appreciate Bitcoin Lyrics, I mean, you're missing the boat. That's what makes it so unique. It's not like they're just random tracks, right? These are all Bitcoin related tracks specifically about Bitcoin and crypto. So love your hip hop, JB. Appreciate you, Devon. Love your show. Thank you. Thank you, everyone here. But the spam eaters love the show. Go figure, Luke. Those clips are insane. Love the show, but rap sucks. I could second that because mainstream rap is designed to keep you poor, uh, unfortunately. Where they rap about taking drugs and doing illicit activities and doing very bad things to people. So that did you know that the prison, the people who control the prisons are the same people, the record execs that control the music industry. And there was a huge... I'm not going to say the word here on the tube, but they've been working together to imprison the youth. And that's why you have gangster rap that was pushed so hard. Even the NWA Ice Cube talks about this, like in interviews now openly, right? So the agenda is to, in, the, the agenda of the, the music is to imprison young folks. That's unfortunately what happens, right? So I understand where you're coming from. Now, there's a difference between conscious hip-hop with a positive message, like from a KRS-One that's teaching pe and educating people, or like a Wu-Tang, versus what you're going to hear when you turn on the radio. It's going to be frequencies that are going to lower your vibration, right, and your ability to connect with your unconscious mind, right, with intelligent infinity. However teach their own, right? To each their own. Since the 70s, since the 80s, every label or most of them, exactly J. Ford, that's how they get paid. Diddy was proven to be on the Gilligan's Island, JV. Uh, in the words of Nate Diaz for that comment. You just shook up the world. How's that feel? Hey, I'm not surprised, mother <laughs> <laughs> For real, for real. KRS. But still sounds good just saying. Thank you, McFootinator. Hip-hop frequencies changed after the 90s. They sure did. JB, I love that you know what's up and tuned in. You see through the BS props. Respect, Don. Exactly, JB. That's the same impression I get. Cheers. Hospin has plenty of songs about how rap is designed to brainwash you to be a slave of the government. Exactly. Hip-hop. 
Fight the power. Shout out Public Enemy. Chuck Chuck D, Flavor Flav. Give the joints and the rap and the dependency. Nice combo on the authoritarians who get, what is that? It's a variance for cookies. Hollow Life, 70, 80, 90, 100,000. Bull market friends. Let's go. But anyways, family, now let's dive into our feature story of the day. Tether co-founder makes a $300,000 Bitcoin price prediction if by April 20th. Let's break this baby down. We know April 20th is around the corner, right? That's 420, by the way. Just saying. But anyways, after a major drop, Bitcoin is back on track with the King Crypto trading back above 71,000 following a roughly 5% hike over the week. Execs think it could go even higher with the Bitcoin having event looming to take place here in April. Now, William Quigley, venture capitalist and co-founder of Tether and Wax.io echoes a similar sentiment, speaking for Squawk on the Street. The exact claim the following. There is a lot of positive forces that are pushing Bitcoin up right now. And this is before the halving, which is usually after that fact when Bitcoin really skyrockets. That's right. The three previous halvings, we had a 2012, 2016, and 2020. It was always the year preceding the halving. We hit that cycle peak just as we did in 2021, November 10th at 69,000. This observation also sheds light on the historical pattern of Bitcoin's halving and the impact on the coin's price trajectory. Traditionally, the halving has been succeeded by a bull market. Now, factors influencing the Bitcoin price. We have Quigley suggesting the Bitcoin price could potentially increase by three or four times its current value, which would be 300 to 400% gains or three to four X, reaching over $300,000 if it regains the 70,000 level by April 20th. And note, we just reclaimed the 70,000 level today. So take that, bears. And according to the exact, Bitcoin's upcoming having event will impact the miners and investors differently. While miners may face challenges amid increased competition, investors should adopt a long-term perspective due to Bitcoin's unique valuation driven by sentiment rather than traditional metrics. And contrary to the viewpoint, we have Lynn Alden, an investment researcher, in conversation noting the following, I think the having is important, but it is only one factor out of many that determines the occurrence and timing of a bull market. Various measures of global liquidity, hodl waves, and other catalysts combine to serve a larger role. And popular analyst Mikhail Van de Pop shared a similar view with Pop predicting a potential surge to 80,000 before the halving in April. Quoting him here, I think that we are close to the peak of this run, but I think we'll have another all-time high test, perhaps even 75 to 80,000 pre-halving. And then we are correcting. So what are your thoughts on that family? Please do let me know. I think personally, 300,000 is a very realistic target for this cycle. I have said it before and I'll repeat myself. My personal prediction for this cycle peak is a bear scenario as low as 222,000 per coin and a bull scenario as high as $750,000 per coin. We also have some very bullish uh, Bitcoin proponents such as Jan 3's Samson Mao, who is predicting 1 million still in play for this year. Max Kaiser, a few weeks ago, as I shared on the podcast, has also upped his price target for this cycle to 700 and uh, what was that? $750,000 per coin. We have ARK Invest's Kathy Wood now pro uh, projecting over $3 million per coin by the year 2030. Initially, her prediction was only $1 million. So people are becoming more and more bullish and for good reason. I think the ETF inflows have far uh, seceded uh, everyone's wildest expectation, including the CEO of BlackRock, Larry Fink. And with game theory in effect, I want you to consider all this. You have MicroStrategy and you have the largest uh, you know, juggernaut of them all as far as asset management is concerned with BlackRock, neck and neck, both with over 200,000 Bitcoin, neither are slowing down. MicroStrategy's grand goal is to acquire 5% of the circulating supply. They already tapped 1%. Uh, and then, of course, BlackRock, like a snowball effect right now, is gaining more and more traction. So they're fighting over biddies in real time. This is game theory. And then let's not forget the other 10 Bitcoin ETFs doing the same thing. Shout out Tiago 
appreciate you subbing. And let's not forget the ETFs that are yet to even be launched. The one that's going to come out of Hong Kong, there's probably going to be a flurry of them all coming around the same time. And they're expediting that, which we know as fact. There's a lot of money there, you know, in that region, obviously, with China, you know what I mean, uh, Malaysia, uh, all those places. And then, you know, Japan, et cetera, a lot of money. But anyways, and then we also have um, out of El Salvador, we're going to have a very special ETF as well with Bitcoin in, Bitcoin out, whereas the U.S. ETFs are ultimately fiat in and fiat out, and you just get the equivalent return. And you also got to consider that Bitcoin ETF BTC cannot be compared to self-custodied Bitcoin because Bitcoin ETF BTC can be confiscated. That's something you have to consider, family, whereas self-custodied Bitcoin is the correct way to hold your Bitcoin where nobody can take it, right? Now we have to consider nation-state adoption. We have the first uh, state, El Salvador, the first one to adopt Bitcoin as a legal tender. Now we have other countries doing the same or following in their footsteps. Uh, Ed Snowden, whistleblower, a couple of weeks back, we shared on the pod, uh, made a tweet, and he ultimately said there is a nation secretly buying Bitcoin behind the scenes, and they're going to be announcing it. Could that be the kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Could that be Qatar? Could that be Canada? Could that be another, you know what I mean, Latin American country? What are your thoughts? So all of these elements are playing out in real time. It's something to consider. Bitcoin supply shock. Crypto quant CEO is projecting in six months, we get a supply shock, which means the 2 million Bitcoin approximation currently on the exchanges dries up and there's no more biddies to buy, right? Just at the rate BlackRock and MicroStrategy are buying Bitcoin can lead to a supply shock. So when we calculate all these other factors into the mix, it's very realistic, family. We hit 300,000, not only potentially this cycle peak, but potentially for this year. But let me know your thoughts in that live chat. I'll read as many of these comments out loud as I can. Shout out, little bit bullish. Your work is awesome, bro. Just saying, greatly appreciate that. Yeah, data biter, I was down a hundred thousand this morning, but Bitcoin was up. It surges. We may see a short squeeze. Props from Portugal. Shout out, Portugal. Good to see you guys. Plug into the Discord. Don't forget, there's a Discord link right there in the live chat. Plug in, family. It's free to do so. Does the fam think we made 70,000 support going forward? If we do get a few days closing above, it's a great platform. Hong Kong will confiscate your biddies, says Adam. I just hate to see such a, uh, what is that? Descendant predatory attack. Everyone knows Sailor is extended. Then the wolves start circling. Preach. Uh, thank you, Don. If you're smart, DCA, and you're almost guaranteed profit, that's right. Everyone who come before us, every Bitcoin hodler who has hodled for four years or longer is in the freaking green. My recommendation, hodl for a minimal of two cycles, which would mean eight years, because not only will you be in the green, but you'll have life-changing gains accompanying you. Just saying, based upon what I have seen in the markets family, there's no guarantee on that. And this is not investment advice. I am just a podcaster sharing my opinion on things for entertainment's sake, for Christ's sake. Just saying, Hong Kong hosts most billionaires. I know it's a wealthy place. I've spent time in Hong Kong. I've lived in China, for Christ's sake. Uh, it's basically like New York City on steroids. A lot of money out there. Preach. Russia today with its miners in Africa. That's right. Uh, they're setting up shop in Ethiopia, a Bitcoin mining hub. We've covered that story, Stephen. You already know. Number two miner after the U.S. Even just 80,000 in Sailor is safe. Man, Sailor's killing it right now. Pod person. I'm just a pod person that believes in God. What do I know? You know what I mean? Pump it up, Jay. Let's go. In Bitcoin, we trust. Amen to that. Jerry, cheers to that. Welcome everyone joining the stream. Pump the likes to pump the stream. We live in the Bitcoin dream right here, live and in the flesh. But one thing you can't say, you can't call it a comeback because Bitcoin's been here for years. Don't call it a comeback. Bitcoin's been here for years. Peer to peer, bitten suckers to fear. Tell them. 196 all-time high for 2024. Send it, autopilot. Higher bottoms. No one knows the tops. This is facts. Not even ZZ Tops knows the tops. There's a reference for you guys out there. Let's freaking go. 70,000 will definitely be support soon. I only see this going to 80,000 after the 150,000 all-time high. That's what's up. So let's hit 150, shall we? If you with that, 
pump the likes. If you want to see $150,000 Biddy, pump the likes. Bought in 2017, way in the green. Preach. Exactly my sentiment, family. Exactly my sentiment. I can relate. 2017 hodler right here. And uh, again, you hodl for two cycles, life-changing. We know this is fact. 165000 in 2024. That's right. Shout out Donna Cicerella. Paisdana, welcome. Buy biddies, says Kaizen. Amen to that. Who wouldn't want to buy some biddies? You got to be crazy. Cray cray. Just saying. <laughs> 60 is 3x the previous bought of the previous high of 20. Wow, that is true. The new, the new, the new, new. Sorry, all 60,000 is in play. Well, I mean, McGregor wishes. 60 G's, baby! <laughs> but we are already back in the 70s. I stayed up all night. I need to take a nap. Oh, no. I'm hella bullish. Love to hear that, Matt. Do you think ETH will dump because of their legal problems? No. I think as long as Bitcoin pumps, ETH comes along for the ride. Even with legal problems and even with the fact there is an <laughs> infinite max supply. People don't really care, apparently. Look at these meme coins with max supplies of numbers I can't even read. There's just too many commas. I don't know how to pronounce. Is it quadrillion? Is it, you know, what comes after quadrillion? I don't even know. But people don't seem to care about the supply. But we all know Bitcoin has a finite limited supply. And the smart money obviously cares. Smart money knows better. Right? ETH is looking good. Predictably, they are being attacked when the SEC is pausing the ETF approval. Well, that's the million dollar question. Do they get the ETF approval this year? BlackRock's betting on it, but will Gary give them the green light or will it be deemed a unregistered security? What are your thoughts? Independent. What do you think of ETH ETF, JB? Will BlackRock, I mean, we're discussing that right now precisely. You just read my mind. Um, I don't know. Maybe they get the green light. Maybe they don't. I really don't know. Uh, Gary acts like he's against it, but I have a feeling, you know, he's for it. As crazy as that sounds, I, I kind of feel like if Larry wants it, he's going to get it. I could be absolutely wrong, so I don't know. I'm just guessing. Uh, Tim Puff just gifted a membership of the channel to Robbie Kaiser. Shout out, Tim. Appreciate that. Thank you. And welcome uh, becoming a member of the show, Robbie. Million, billion, trillion, quadrillion, quintillion. There you go. Some of these coins have a, <laughs> a not just an infinite max supply. Maybe it's quintillion, but Ether, it says the infinity sign, which means more than quintillion. And that's a little sus. Just saying. ETH is a security, says Matt. ETH J. I wish, but doubt it. Serious question. Uh, JV MicroStrategy was down majorly today. What caused it? I just took some 25 year old to buy Bitcoin. Uh, oh, word. They thought if you bought years ago, you would profit. But now, hmm, I'm not sure I understand that comment there. Gensler is for it if they register as a security. Well, I, yeah, because I guess it's the CFTC that overlooks commodities. Correct me if I'm wrong. And the SEC oversees securities, right? So if it's deemed a security, it would be on Gensler's turf. If it's deemed a commodity, it wouldn't be on Gensler's turf. Correct me if I'm wrong. Do you also hold Gary? <laughs> no. <laughs> Nothing to do with Gary. Don't call it a comeback. Bitcoin's been here for years, peer to peer. How do you relate the gold pump? I mean, obviously, everyone knows the death of the dollar is incoming, so gold should be pumping as it is and hitting all-time highs, but 5% pump for gold as no comparison to a 300% pump for Bitcoin. So choose your weapon wisely. Devon says, correct. Thank you. People think they missed the Bitcoin train. They don't realize the past was a science experiment and made some millionaires, but the real opportunity is now. I agree with you there, data biter. All in on Bowdoin. What's Bowdoin? <laughs> Thank God it didn't say Biden. Uh, I'm not surprised, mother frickers. Exactly, Alan. Precisely. Pump it up. You already know. Let's go. This one's for you. Well, well, well. You know what time it is. What time is it? It's time to hit that sweet all-time high, isn't it? Woo. We back, baby. Bitcoin, shitcoins, or NFTs. There's no greater feeling than... 
No greater feeling than hitting that. Hitting that sweet, sweet. Old time line, old time line, old time mind. This bitch, watch it pump to the sky. We just buy and get yeah. rich. Boom, shakalaka. Shout out Chris Robinson. Bitcoin for the pump. In past markets, when gold pump Bitcoin dumped, I take Bitcoin and gold pumps as a sign. This is a super cycle. Love that, Jennifer. Bitcoin is a blaster, but ICP is the lightsaber. <laughs> a little Star Wars reference for my young Padawans out there. Our bottom is 62, but we can make it 70,000 if we're here for a few days. Shout out, JK. Independent free soul. Let's go. Bitcoin to the freaking moon. I'm not saying Bitcoin is number one. Yeah, I'm sorry I lied. Bitcoin is number one, two, three, four, and five. <laughs> Sounds like those 25-year-olds are those who were still doubting the internet in 1997. Precisely. The internet's not going anywhere. Why would anyone want to send something virtually through the mail? Makes no sense. Remember those <laughs> news? Man, that's why you can't trust the news on anything. Bye-bye, dollar. Hello, CBDC. Facts, dankness. We all know it's coming. Tomorrow, PCE in the USA can be a game changer for Bitcoin. We'll be covering it, family, so make sure to tune into the pod. All time high, all time high in this what? Yeah. All time high, all time high, all time high in this yeah. bitch. Yeah. Watch yeah. it pump, pump, baby, uh. we just buy and get rich. Tell them, shout out Little Bubble. Buy Bitcoin, let's go. In reality, all is paying the zero sums because now world order, no. Next week should be great. Right on, but GBTC is losing steam and Fink and others are now advertising as bullish. It doesn't feel nice to front run frickin' uh, Larry Fink. We had a healthy pause letting the, letting the new ETF investors get used to the market. Now we saw it go up, it go down. New income dollars come with expiration dates on CBDCs. Of course. Of course. That's why we don't trust CBDC. Trust nothing we, why do we love Bitcoin, like bigger picture? It separates money from the state. The state is corrupt. We don't trust them. We don't want them issuing our money. The same way we don't want the state in control of our health. We've seen what happened after COVID, right? We saw what happened. We don't want them in control of anything important of our lives because if they're in control, we're screwed. Some will say, well, they're just not competent. No, they're corrupt. They're crooked and they're criminals. And they use the excuse of incompetence to get away with their criminal Activity. And speaking of criminal activity, here's a little songy song. Bitcoin, etc. You pointed out the only true use case for it is criminals, drug traffickers, anti-money learning. Jamie Demon on the ones and twos. Tax avoidance. Criminals, drug traffickers. Donna says exactly. Healthy pause for the God candle. I'm holding cash until Bitcoin goes to 150 G's. Then that's when I know it's real. Sad to say, it's going to take Bitcoin to pump another 100 plus percent for you to know it's real. Uh, do you not know it's real now? <laughs> take advantage of the pump now. If you know, you know what I mean? Anyways, some of my boomer friends are asking about ETFs and I tell, show them how to buy Bitcoin and auto. I tell them not to buy the paper Bitcoin. Crazy though. Some people prefer it. And no matter what you say, you can't. Here's, a, here's, a, here's something. You can't say the wrong thing to the right person. And you can't say the right thing to the wrong person. Everyone pays Bitcoin at the price they deserve, right? It's not for everybody, that's for sure. We know that. Scared money don't make money. Hey, that's that's my motto at the casino, yo. Scared money don't make money. All in. <laughs> Let's go. Lettuce hands be done out here. That's right, Alan. The Asian and Salvadoran ETFs will be in kind. Damn straight, yo. It's going to be a game changer. If you were to invest in an ETF, would you rather do so with Bitcoin in and Bitcoin out or just fiat? Personally, it's not even a, a question for me. However, self-custody is still always going to be the superior option. So learn how to self-custody your biddies and get them off the exchanges. You have been warned. Friend just texted me, Dubai Emirate selling $13 billion of gold to buy Bitcoin. For real. Well, if that's in the news, that'll be tomorrow's lead story, family. So thank you, Rock. Bone Daddy, what it do? Jennifer ETF is good for those with the IRAs at a 401k? Precisely. I understand that as well. By the law, governments can't make the dollars and be the bank. But with CBDCs, they will hold all the power. 
and law prohibited them. As soon, they will be giving the government every gram of powder, power. Yeah, I'm against that. Uh, Bitcoin is the antidote to those CBDCs. They're going to control you through them. They're going to control you by your spending habits. They can give you an expiration date. They could be like, yo, didn't you make fun of Jamie Demon on that stream, JV? Because of that, your social credit score is down to a self-custody with Samurai Wallet. And what does that say? Ronin Dojo Bitcoin Privacy Node, says JK. I orange pill three people now. I'm feeling proud. Respect, boss. If everyone just orange pill three people, game changer. Bitcoin will be a million dollars before you can blink. Stay vigilant. Damn straight. Bitcoin ordinals and such will the future future be the future. F the ETF. They bring down the table. Every gram of powder. Freudian slip there, JV. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Welcome, homie. Welcome home. Shout out one house. Let's go. Anyways, fam, here's what we're going to do. We're going to continue with the uncensored version of the podcast exclusively on Rumble because I got nothing but love for my Rumble fam. For those that don't know, I stream live each and every day on both YouTube and Rumble. When the YouTube stream is finito, we continue with the uncensored version exclusively on Rumble. We can talk about things like... uh, Diddy, we can talk about things that I'm forbidden from talking about here on the tube for obvious reasons. So head on over to freaking Rumble right now. My Rumble link is always in the description. Or if you could remember, rumble.cryptonewsalerts.net. Easy to remember, rumble.cryptonewsalerts.net. Or simply open up the Rumble app on your phone and just look for Crypto News Alerts in the search. You'll find us live and in the flesh right now. It's been fun, YouTube. I'll be back tomorrow. And uh, in the meantime, head on over to Rumble, and I'll see you guys here on Rumble in a few moments. Let's go. All right. YouTube stream should be over. Rumble fan, where you at? Holla at your boy. Make some noise. We haven't